So I've been playing around with thrust vector control recently and I've made some pretty cool hardware improvements. This is kind of just a check-in video. I started off by using thrust vanes to control an EDF airstream. I quickly learned this was pretty inefficient. Um, the flow loses a ton of energy as it hits the vanes and there's no real way for me to optimize these things without some pretty intricate CFD. And then the biggest adverse effect of this is actually the extra torque created by these vanes when the vane is rotated against the flow of a system that already has a singular rotating van. This results in an angular momentum vector that's 90 degrees away from the torque vector. I go into depth in this in my last video, but basically the system gets super complicated super quickly. My latest attempt in solving this problem is using a two-axis gimbal instead. I'll go into why this is the new direction I'm taking later on, but right now I'll just give you a quick overview and some testing. So this first iteration was obviously never meant to go in the air. This is more of a proof of concept for the mechanical system as well as a testing bed for some PID control. This turned out a lot bigger than I had hoped. Even in CAD, I didn't expect it to look this big in real life. And although I can't really hang this up as well as I could in my last monocopter, you can see that the response is actually pretty good. Even without the PID, the response to the gyro is pretty quick. And then hopefully in the slow motion, you can see the servo kind of gimbling to where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go over my build and coding process for this gimbal if you wanted to implement something similar for your drones at home. But if you're new to home robotics or RC flying and don't know where to begin in terms of fabrication, I want to plug today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an incredibly professional and affordable service that manufactures everything from custom PCBs to injection molds. All you have to do is upload your file to their website and get a free quote. For example, I'm going to upload one of the SDLs I have from this project and go through all of their options. They have a ton of different materials available. They have SLA, SLS, FDM. They even have things like engravings if I wanted it. And then I get an instant quote and estimated delivery date. It's really that easy. If you don't have immediate access to things like high quality 3D printers or 5-axis CNC, the PCB way can get you your parts delivered to your door within days. I'm going to put a referral link in my description. New members get $5 off their first purchase. So to really get a handle on how these two axis gimbals work, I went on Thingiverse and found this model by MDR underscore LTD. These are meant for small hobby motor rockets and it uses two micro servos. It's pretty easy to print. I had it up and running in a couple hours. I'm using a long Fly Dream V1 as my flight controller. You can see I get a pretty good range of motion here. So then I went on to make my own model in SOLIDWORKS. The main reason why this thing is so big is because I wanted to leave a lot of space to ensure a wide range of motion. After I had printed and assembled everything, I kind of eyeballed it to measure the angles. I have about 30 degrees of motion on both sides for both axes, which is pretty good compared to some gimbals I saw online. Even with this though, I definitely overestimated how big it needed to be. I did manage to get away with 0% infill for most of these parts. If anything, it was just to save on the amount of filament I was using. I'm using this black PLA+. Plus. The very light infill was more than enough structurally, and these parts ended up turning out pretty well. So the hardest design choice I had to make was figuring out what servos to go with. This is definitely not something you want to cheap out on. I calculated the maximum torque I needed to be 3 kg centimeters. This is just force required times distance move. I ended up going with these DS3218 servos. These have a max torque rating of 18 kg centimeters. It might seem like overkill to have 6 times the required torque, but I need a huge margin here if I wanted really precise control. Weighing in at 60 grams each, this was the best option I could find that balances price, power, and weight. So to my relief, the servos seemed powerful enough to move everything pretty quickly. I was getting about the expected range at a pretty good speed. One major design issue though is that you could see the wire I was using was bending. I think these are about 20 gauge wire. To fix this, I printed this sheet of PLA Plus to stick over the wire. This way the wire could only bend so much in the rigid PLA shell. And hopefully in this clip you could see that this pretty much solved this issue. I hooked the servos up to my FlySky TX, and the entire assembly seems to be gimbling on these two axes pretty well. I then strapped up the ESC and the battery, as well as the Longfly Dream V1, all onto the outer parts of the assembly. This is some testing of control without PID. As you can see, it's pretty responsive, there's no noticeable delay with the servos, and it's mechanically pretty sound. This is a good transition into the Arduino code I'm using for this. The Longfly Dream 1 is Arduino compatible, which has been a huge help for me. 
It also has a really well integrated MPU6050, which is a gyroscope accelerometer unit. This is a quick look into the non-PID code, where I basically just use a complementary filter to combine the gyroscope and accelerometer data. After getting these angles, which are named pitch and roll, I just map it to the servo and that's basically it. Then I added a PID, it's a pretty basic one. Hopefully the math for the error is pretty clear here. But this is essentially the same logic, it takes the angles and then it just maps the new PID angle to the servos. So for my actual monocopter in my last iteration, I hung it up in a string to test it. This is a lot different, but I kind of wanted to try that anyway. Off the bat, I noticed a ton of angular momentum, just like I had in my last iteration of the monocopter. This is pretty expected as, again, we only have one singular rotating fan blade. I spent a good amount of time trying to tune my PID in hopes of kind of counteracting some of that spin. I didn't really get anywhere, of course. At this point, I was kind of just messing around. If I actually want to tune something like this, I'd have to pay a lot more attention to overall weight distribution and things like that. Again, this is not supposed to be a vehicle, it's just supposed to be a test stand, but it's good to know that angular momentum will be a huge issue. And like you saw in the clips at the beginning, the gimbal is responding pretty well to the changes in angles. So the next step from here is obviously cutting down on the weight and size of the gimbal by a ton. In doing that, I want to keep kind of the vehicle design in mind. So starting to think about weight balance, where to put all of the components, etc. That said, the final gross weight of this ended up being around 680 grams. I'm running a 64mm EDF with a maximum output of 1.2 kilograms, which means the thrust weight on this is already like 2. This is a really good sign because again, I think I can cut a lot of weight. And if a final vehicle ends up being around this weight, I think we have a good chance of flying. Another big goal is to design a test stand for this. There's a bunch of PID testing stands for quadcopters out there. I think it'd be really worth it to spend some time on a homemade stand. But yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching.